Right. So this is something a bit new that I'm doing. Uh, I'm not being rude if I don't necessarily look at your or talk to you. I've got several various screens um, that I'm using to work from. Um, okay, so basically in a nutshell, what I am going to do, I'm just double checking to make sure I'm going live. Yes, I am. Awesome. So what I'm going to do for you is every now and again, I'm going to come on to, uh, whilst doing my work, I'm going to come on here and basically I'm going to show you what it is that I do um, on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm sat in my little studio at home and uh, you can ask me any editing tips or advice or see how I produce videos and what I put together. So... If people jump on, they jump on. If they don't, they don't. It's entirely up to them. If you keep, say, if you keep seeing me looking over this way, I've got two screens. I can only look at one at once, and I do often use two screens uh, when editing video because it's very, very beneficial to have files and folders open on one, and my main editing screen on the other. Uh, so we've got a, a couple of people that are jumped on. I think watching now. So we'll uh, get into the old editing so as you can see I am using Ecamm Live this is something that I've not really used very much of uh, through this stream but I thought I'd give it a whirl and see how we get on with this Ecamm Live and if I like it I'm gonna purchase it so if not I'll go back to my OBS so I'm sorry that there's like an Ecamm Live right there across it's just I'm not prepared to pay for Ecamm Live just yet if I don't like it so as you can see, we're editing Fletcher's renovations today, uh, which is a little bit different to some of the other kind of businesses that I've done testimonials and things for. We've got five testimonials here that I've done for Jason Fletcher, um, managed to shoot them all within a day. So uh, just to refresh me, like I said, this is completely off script. I'm just winging this, um, completely off script. So we'll see where we get. So I'm gonna just carry on about my day like normal. The reason we've been booked onto the course is because we need to do full restorations of houses and obviously plastering is included in that. Uh, so it's just another step on, on the journey basically. Right, so we've Learning to plaster and trowel up. I, I wouldn't have even dreamed of doing it before. Second one, big ones, tips that you get off a, a proper pro plasterer that you won't get anywhere else, just tools of the trade and that kind of thing. Uh, third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between between the trowels and, and that kind of thing and between your coats, otherwise you, you won't learn that outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Now I've booked this course, I feel a lot more confident going forward, outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. So I definitely feel a lot better going out on, on my own jobs doing them. Yeah, I, I would definitely recommend this course to... Right, okay, so I can see whereabouts that we've uh, got with this. So now it's a case of picking out the right B-roll and dropping it in, I think. So for those of you that don't know what B-roll is, B-roll is basically um, these kind of little clips that I've shot here of, uh, I believe this guy's called James, I think, uh, of James, and uh, we're just basically popping that over the top of his uh, testimonial that we've already kind of pieced together uh, prior to doing this. And there's his like kind of finished wall that we've got that he's going to be doing. So we want, uh, we've got the mixing up process. So I think the next thing we need is we need putting the plaster onto the trowel. So we'll have the scoop, blob. So we'll, we'll get that bit. I think that's quite a good little clip. So what we'll do there is we shall place that after there. Proper pro plaster that you won't get any. There we go. So we've managed to piece that bit in. And I think next, is there a scooping? Scoop, that's what we want. So we'll just get the scoop and the blob. 
In fact, now we'll just get the scoop. Scoop. That's it. So we've took the scoop clip. Again, we'll bang that in just after. And then we want a bit where he's popping it on a wall. So we've got to look at which wall he's on. Not that one. Maybe this shot. Because you can't quite see what he's doing, but you get the, the, the facial expression with the concentration. And I think that's quite nice. It's always nice, I think, to have that, uh, that bit of pride, when you can see that bit of pride within someone doing what it is that they do when with the work. So let's... Where does that end? Let's see where that takes us to. I wouldn't have even dreamed of doing it before. Second one, big ones, tips that you get off a, a proper pro plasterer that you won't get anywhere else, just tools of the trade and that kind of thing. Uh, hmm. Uh, uh, third one, I trade and that kind of thing. Right, let's get rid of that uh, and let's make the ears are never good. So all we do there is we snip, because you're not going to be able to see this, so I can I can hide it. Third one. Yeah, that's where we need to take it from. So let's take out the ear. There we go. So let's get rid of the ear. and that kind of thing. Third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between. Right, so that clip goes on a little bit too long, I think. <laughs> Third one, I'd probably say is, is, is the timings between. Cool, that bit short. And that kind of thing. Third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between. Oh no, no, because he turns away from camera. Yeah, let's. Let's extend it actually to cover that turn away from the camera. We don't want that. It's between, between the trowels, the timings between, between the trowels and, and that kind of thing in between your coats. Otherwise, you, you won't learn that outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Okay. Now I've got this course, I feel a lot more confident. So, I think we now need a bit of a... That, that's got to jump in. I think we, we should zoom in a bit. Now, the thing here is I've got the freedom to zoom in because I've shot this footage in 4K. This is something that a lot of people get wrong. If you shoot footage on your phone, for example, a lot of the time your phone's set as a standard um, to shoot in 1080, uh, which is full HD resolution. Uh, if we're exporting this this particular video as a full HD video, then if I've just shot in full HD and then I zoom it in, it's decreasing the quality of the actual footage itself so it's important that even though this is a 1080 video it's going to be a full HD video once we've finished the video because we've shot it in 4k that allows me to zoom in into the footage by up to 200 percent without losing that 1080p quality so it's very important that if you are going to zoom in on anything, make sure you shoot it at a higher quality and do the math behind it to work out how much you can zoom in by. So you can see there, look, there's no difference in the quality at all. And that is because I've shot it in 4K. So there's a reason for 4K shooting. It's just it does take up a lot more space <clears throat> uh, on your SD cards or on your hard drive, etc. So that's uh, another reason why we do that. So I think this clip, uh, like I said, I've zoomed in a bit more. 
Uh, I'm just going to drag the position down because his eye line, I think, is a little bit higher than a third. I like to keep the eyes roughly at about a third. So I'm going to drop him down. So if I go into my Y, uh, my Y axis and just pull him down a little bit like that. But see, there we go. That's a bit better. He's, he's a little bit more central there, his eyes. Uh, I try and stick to something that's called the rule of thirds, uh, which is uh, a nice little shooting trick. So that's basically when you separate your uh, screen into a grid of nine and uh, I try and keep the eyes on the on the top line. It's easier if I actually had a grid that I could show you but I've not actually set a grid up. Um, I'll have to set one up for another time. So what does he say here? Now I've booked this course I feel a lot more confident going forward outside even between morning and afternoon of certain days you feel more confident you pick it up that quickly so I definitely feel a lot better going out on on my own jobs doing them yeah, that's good that's good we've used a fair amount of these clips I want to get Not that one. Don't like that one. I'm getting rid of that. I've used that clip. Get rid of that. We're not going to get him mixing up anymore. We've got him putting plaster on. Use that. I don't think we really need any more of these in, so I think I'm going to drop them out. Maybe separate some of this. So we've got... I wouldn't have even dreamed of doing it before. Second one, big ones, tips that you get off a, a proper pro plasterer that you won't get anywhere else, just tools of the trade and that kind of thing. So let's just, just for sheer seeing how it works, separate them. Kind of thing. Third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between between the trowels and, and that kind of thing in between your coats, otherwise you, you wouldn't learn that outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Right, so now to just make it a bit better, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a couple of cuts in. So that, you don't see that. That, you don't see that. So we want to change the camera angle just a little bit. That angle, I'm going to drop in here. So we're, trans we're copying the position and the scale. Oh, hi, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, yeah, there we go. I've oh, wow, it's pulling my comments through. I can see comments. I didn't quite realise that. But there we go. Uh, what's this do? I can star comments. I don't understand what that does, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Uh, what's this do? I don't. I don't know. Never mind. Uh, I don't quite understand what all the functions of this thing do yet. Oh, I've zoomed in. I didn't mean to. There we go. But there you go. Right. So now we've got. It goes from a steady wide shot. The reason we've been booked onto the course is because we need to do full restorations of houses and obviously plastering is included in that. We can even, if we really, really want to try, starting off with the zoom in, because that's quite an important part. And then, uh, So it's just another step on, on the journey, basically. Yeah, and then it goes to the Fletcher renovation. Learning to plaster. And trowel up. I, I wouldn't have even dreamed of doing it before. Second one, big ones, tips that you get off a, a proper pro plasterer that you won't get anywhere else, just tools of the trade and that kind of thing. Third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between between the trowels and, and that kind of thing in between your coats, otherwise you, you won't learn that outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Now I've booked this course, I feel a lot more confident going forward, outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. So I definitely feel a lot better going out on, on my own job.
Mm. It's course. I feel a lot more confident going forward. Outside, even between morning and afternoon yeah, and certain like... days, you feel more confident. You pick it up that quickly. So I definitely feel a lot better going out on, on my own jobs doing them. Yeah, I, I would definitely recommend. Right, so we need to get rid of the yeah if we can. Um, this is going to be the, this is a difficult thing. This is partly my fault. I should have had, uh, had him do this bit again because he starts off with yeah. Um, ideally, we don't want any yes or so's or anything like that. Yeah, I, I would. So we just need the I would. I would definitely. I would. So that's where we want it from. So we need to get rid of this. Let's try that. My own job's doing them. I would definitely recommend this course to, to other people. Who've been... There we go. Smashed it. That's better. Uh, so we've got the whole testimonial is it's a little bit long. Ideally, I could do it cropping something out of it that doesn't add value. I'm trying to keep them to less than one minute. There's a purpose why I keep... Uh, social media testimonials because there's a big difference between social media testimonials and website testimonials um, it all comes down to uh, your target market and what you want your call to action to be and how you want uh, people to interact with your video um, on a website you've already kind of gained people's interest so you, your video can be much longer um, you know you can have 90 second two minute long testimonials on a web uh, on a website uh, and your call to actions or might be like book now below by clicking on the button or whatever whereas on a social media platform you're not going to have uh, the same call to actions it might be more like to find out more information click the link below or send us an email or something that you know the, the call to actions that differ slightly um, and for those of you that don't know what a call to action is it's the final part uh, of of your video like this little bit it's the last so what five seconds uh, where you get the, the title come back in and it says email admin at FletcherRenovations.com so it's telling people what it is that they want that you want them to do it's that you want people to send you an email um, you know obviously the whole post is going to be based around when, when these videos go out it's going to be based around uh, if you're wanting to book onto the course duh, 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 listen to what so and so said if you're interested book on uh, you know you get the recommendation at the end uh, I might even try and put maybe a little bit of. Have I done that on the first one? So if we come on here, no, I haven't. Uh, but I might do that to cut them down because that one is also a minute and five. So I might pop that in over some of the right uh, in over some of here. Let me try that on here. So what I'll do is I will just bring that uh, maybe over just a little bit and rebang that back in and I'd imagine you'll, you'll have a few more people on it in the future so that bugger off instantly takes a couple of seconds off which is good and I don't think that, that looks bad, you know, having a bit of your writing gone to your call to action, I think that looks pretty well. So if I just jump back to this one and do a similar thing, uh, just cut that out and drag that in here and repaste that transition back in. Garage ain't right past, I'd 100% recommend it to anyone. There you go, awesome sources. So we're building up how these are slowly but surely put together. We've got there's bits of B-roll in. I wish I'd had a little bit more. Let me have a look and see if we've got anything of Jason teaching or Jason doing something. He's teaching some other one else, somewhere else there. Right, I'm just going to take that for now. See if there's any others. No, there isn't. Right, so here, what we've got is we've got this is Jason Fletcher. He's the guy that uh, runs Fletcher Renovations and he's the trainer. 
Um, all we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in to the maximum that I can and I'm going to move so Jason wants to be positioned more here I, think. I know you can see the hair there in the corner but I don't think that really matters per se so that that we might be able to use that as an actual clip there uh, it's still going to be at 10 1080p because it's been shot in 4k uh, so that's always a good sign So let's see where we can fit that in. He mentioned somewhere about Jason's always there. I wouldn't say. Now I've booked this course, I feel a lot more confident going forward. Outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. So I definitely feel... Where does he, where does he say it? You, you wouldn't learn that outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Now I've booked this course, I feel a lot more confident going forward. Outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. So I definitely feel a lot better going out on... on. So you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. Maybe, to cut it down, because that's a reiteration. So you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. I would definitely recommend this course to... And cut that here. Let's just look at that and see how that flows. I need to see if it still makes now sense. Now I've booked this course, I feel a lot more confident going forward. Outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. I would definitely recommend this course to to other people who've been said to our boss that it's definitely worth doing and I'd imagine he'll, he'll have a few more people on it in the future. Okay, so we're nearly there. We are nearly, nearly there. Doing and I'd imagine he'll... To other people who've been said to our boss that it's definitely worth doing and... So maybe if we fade him out a bit sooner... Pull that just before a minute. Something worth doing, I'd imagine he'll, he'll have a few more people on it in the future. Boom, less than a minute. There we go. So that testimonial, less than a minute. And it's got three pieces of B-roll in it, which is really, really good. Maybe now we can have a play about with shifting some of the B-roll. So, for example, we can... Oh, hang on. Let me uh, pull that back to where it were. Ooh. Edit redo. So here, for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over there to the finish. Move that over here. I'm going to put that clip with that. Anything in between your coats, otherwise. Yeah. I'm just going to extend it a bit so you get a bit of a swoosh. Swoosh with a trowel. Important that we get this right. You, you won't learn that. I'll, I'll. Now, confident you pick it up. Certain days, you feel more confident. You pick it up that quickly. I would definitely recommend this course to. There we go. I think that now tells the story a bit better. 
third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between. So you've got the mix up. Jason teaching. Him having a go. Maybe swap them. Yes, swap them. Hundred percent swap them. And that kind of thing in between your coats, otherwise you, you won't learn that. Oh. Cause this is more of a completed wall, you see. <laughs> Jason, yeah, mate, they're looking Feel good. Feel more confident. You pick it up that quickly. I would definitely recommend this course to to other people who've been said to our boss that it's definitely worth doing. I'd imagine he'll he'll have a few. Nice one. Right. Okay. So the final thing, and now this I find is the most time-consuming thing, is uh, finding music. So, um, it is very, very, very difficult to find the right kind of music. Let me just get where I get a bit of music from. Right, so now you should be able to see my YouTube uh, channel. So yeah, I don't know whether many, many people probably already know this, but uh, there's various different places that you can get uh, music from. Now for a lot of my stuff, unless people are wanting specific music, for now I use YouTube's free audio library. If people are wanting uh, better quality audio, then it comes at an extra cost. Uh, I'm afraid, and I I use where are we? Audio Jungle. <clears throat> so this is another um, another place where you can purchase music from, which is Audio Jungle. And uh, yeah, go away. You, like I said, you're looking at they're not very expensive. You took twenty six dollars, eleven dollars, five dollars. All varies on what it is that you want. Uh, you know. There's various different, I don't know why it's come up with Yellow Bus, but you know, there's various different types of music that you can get. You can download music packs, you've got different uh, fields of music. You know, it all depends what you want, but the, the principle here is you're looking at anything between $5 and maybe $50 a track. So if there is something that people do want, this is usually where I find the music from for people's audio. But nine times out of ten, people seem to be happy with. Uh, the YouTube free audio, um, it does make your video a little bit cheaper because I understand videos can be quite expensive anyway. Uh, so let's have a look and see what we've got. I like a lot of the dancey electro kind of music but it all depends on what we've got so let's play a few. Nope. No. No. Oh god, no. This is the most time consuming part. Why are they all so long? I think I need to put a filter on here. Uh, duration. I don't want anything longer than, say, uh, 
1 minute 30. So I want shorter than a minute and 30. I don't want things to be very long. Full of crap, isn't it? Just not for these, this is that's quite sad, isn't it? Oh yeah. That's quite nifty. No, these are all wrong, all wrong. Ambient Nope 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 No, this is not right uh, What's this one? Nope So none of these are any good. See, this is the most difficult part. Hmm. Okay. Let's just do search. 
genre. Let's try shorter than three minutes. I can always cut a track down. But I still don't want it to be forever. Alright. Try that. Okay, so we download that. And here it is looking my files and my folders. Uh, I organize a lot of my files and folders into various different client lists. So we've gone to Fletcher's Renovations. And what I'll do is I will drop any music into a new folder in here <coughs> that I use for Jason's Vince. So we come into here, into music, there it is, so and then come across, drop that in. I always like to organise mine by kind, I don't know why, it's just a, a thing that I do. And then, what I'm now going to do is I'm literally just going to drag this now into my, uh, over here. So, there it is, and I drag it in. So now, I always like to start... A song where a downbeat comes into a transition. Don't ask why. It's just a personal preference. It's just what I like. There we go. Right, I can see what's happening again now. So you can see that the track's very, very long. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be loud. But initially, I, I like the track loud because I like to get the track right first. So what I do... Just temporarily, I mute these down, and then I get the track where I want it to be. So, the track I want to come in as the transition comes in. And, uh, it kind of just starts. So you can see it's timed. This is, this is one of the key things that a lot of people they, they look at videos and they just they, they don't realize <laughs> um, as a professional video creator you know you, you want to be timing if you can your cuts and things to happen uh, on certain beats within the music so it's important that as a video producer and editor that you actually at least understand a little bit about music as well so you need to understand about beat mapping, about how many beats there are in a, in a, in a bar and in a second, you know, all that kind of stuff. You need, you need to kind of get your head around that. So you kind of have to know a little bit about music as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of good that I am musically minded as well as video minded because I, I get that. And, you know, like I said, when, when that beat dropped in, it transitioned to, to, to this section of the video, which, you know, something as little as that makes a massive difference to a, an amateur video to a professional video it's dropping it in in the right place um, so let's see how this video how this track ends
pause it there because there there's a downbeat right so there's your downbeat so let me cut the track on the downbeat right okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I I ah, see look we're a bit short so I need to find another downbeat preferably round about here ah that, that works out quite well that does work out quite well now we're not going to necessarily get that piece in um, I'm sure I can cut that down a bit so let's find a downbeat here I've got a feeling it'll be around about there from looking at the audio track above because it's important that we keep the timing uh, you know a lot of people they, they don't quite understand that either so let's have a let me just uh, cut that and mute this bit Might be ever so slightly out. Yeah, is it slightly out? Not by much. There's a beat. Right, okay. So I can see that that is a fraction out. See what I mean? See, see the, the the detail, the accuracy there. That that would be a big difference. So now let's listen. There we go. That sounded like it was in time. So something as as minute as that is is the difference between you know knowing what you're looking for and kind of not knowing what you're looking for. Um, so now obviously we need to fade these two together to make this track work. So by by kind of like here we we we, we want to have of of that transition of it. Hang on. 1 2 3 4 2 2 3 4 3 So by there, hundred percent. That that other track's gotta to, gotta to have gone. It needs to kind of fade out massively once this beat comes in. But we can't just, you know, we we can't just have it dip completely. Um, otherwise, it won't work. Because if it just kind of cuts, sometimes it can it can sound a bit funny. Um, so I'm gonna just have a play. I mean, it, it might sound okay with a cut, but. See, to me, that I don't know, there's just something there that doesn't sound quite right. Uh, let me try just putting a fade in, like a big fade. But I want it to drop right off really quickly. See, because you get that, tsh, it's like a crash symbol. So maybe if I dip it out relatively quick like that. That's better. That sounded good. That sounded good. We don't need that in at the end. And now we need to... So we need to fade this out sooner. So let's 
cut it at the end and let's see whereabouts we need to bring that down to a close that spike is where it needs to fade out from so if I move that to there I need that then to fade and it's got to fade out relative I think relatively even. no too quick far too quick and the wrong kind of fade Got to start fading out a lot earlier because of the kind of end that it is. Uh, let's try and fade it out a bit earlier then. That's better, but the audio drops out too quick. Let's put an over arc. It sounded better before. Let's try that. That sounds better. There we go. Happy times. So now it's all about now bringing that voice, uh, the voice back in, and dropping the decibels of this so I like to always try and start at around minus 18 uh, sometimes it's right sometimes it's not it all depends upon uh, the audio of the chat talking so let's have a listen and see whereabouts we are now with this video so you can see it's changed quite dramatically from when we first started here I mean we've been uh, editing this one up now for just under an hour, it's been about 47 minutes. Granted, I've probably done maybe 15, 20 minutes work on this already, so this has probably been about an hour for this one. Now, bear in mind, there's five to edit, so you're talking near enough a full day's work to edit these five. And these are just super quick testimonials. These aren't, you know, uh, all singing and all dancing like some of them that I do. Um, so let's, uh, let's have a watch and see what we've got. The reason we've been booked onto the course is because we need to do full restorations of houses and obviously plastering is included in that. Uh, so it's just another step on, on the journey basically. Right, so already there, I've noticed something that I'm not happy with. This is why it's important that we review and watch his work. Um, you know, I think it needs to fade in for a start across that period of time. And I do think that this section needs to be louder and it needs to then transition uh, over to being quiet as he's going to start talking because it needs to be louder because we need to hear that drop. So I think if we make this minus 13, see how loud that gets. Full restorations of houses and obviously plastering is included in that. Uh, so it's just another step on, on the journey basically. Used to be louder still, I think. The, the, the fading wasn't too bad, but that first beat needs to really, really engage people. So maybe minus eight. On the journey, basically. Learning to plaster and try. Move that fade over, because it, it doesn't need to be that, that soon. Learning to plaster and trowel up, but I wouldn't have even dreamed of doing it before. Second one, big ones, tips that you get off a, a pro. A good pro plasterer that you won't get anywhere else, just tools of the trade and that kind of thing. Third one, I'd probably say is, is the timing between between the trowels and, and that kind of thing in between your coats, otherwise you, you won't learn that outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Now I've got this course, I feel a lot more confident 
going forward, outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. I would definitely recommend this course to, to other people who've been said to our boss that it's definitely worth doing. I'd imagine he'll, he'll have a few more people on it in the future. Yep. Right, so I think we've now got, in terms of an audio, a nice, a nice standard level. Um, right, so the next thing that I think we need to be looking at is uh, the colouring of of the video, you know, so, you know, he's very flat at the moment. Um, this is something that I try and use the automated features first off to see what I get. So I go on balance colour. You can see how that's just made the oranges and the whole feel of it a little bit more warm from there, you know. You might not see much, you might see a little bit. Um, one of the other things that sometimes that we can do, or that I like to do, is I come on here onto the saturation, and I just boost the saturation of the whole thing just ever so slightly, by maybe say 15%, makes it that little bit warmer. Um, I find it does, you know, that instantly to me looks better than that. There's a much more colour in there, but we don't want to overdo it with the colour. At the end of the day, it's a testimonial. It's got to look real. It's not. Um, it's not a feature film. This is where a lot of a lot of the time I find when I've seen uh, testimonials and things done before. I think they go a little bit over the top with the whole colour grading uh, side of it. I I like it to keep it a, a natural. Uh, raw kind of feel I don't want it to be over the top and I think that's it, that, that to me looks as if I'm looking through a, a genuine set of eyes as to how it would be I mean that like I said that looks a little bit flat so now what we can do now is we can take that setting that I've just applied there and I can you know copy uh, the balance and the color across the whole board so now you kind of get the same warm tone and feeling throughout the whole testimonial for these clips now obviously these ones I've not yet done um, this is where color grading can get a little bit more in depth when you start looking at individual shots it all depends upon uh, how well your color balancing uh, is on your software mine is relatively good um, however, again, I might just boost the saturation a little bit on my shots by say maybe fifteen percent, just to give it that little bit Second more. Second one, color. big ones, tips. You know, uh, that that's just a personal preference. But ultimately, when it comes to color grading, it's whatever you feel looks nice. I think, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say there's necessarily a right or wrong way to grade it depends what what kind of feel you're looking for i mean that that shot there to me that still looks a bit flat even though it's has it had the balance color on it oh no that's why it's not had the balance color on it there we go so that balance color there we go there's the warm tones straight away it's brought that warm tone out of uh, out of it and then we're going to pop that color board in uh, with with the saturation just to give it that little bit more, and that that look at that, that's so much different from what it was before. Um, you know that that to me is unreal. So let's just uh, show you the difference there. So as soon as I take the color balance off, look, it goes more grey straight away, more like a bluey tingy color. And as soon as I drop that saturation, it goes even worse. So that's the difference that it makes. It just very subtle, but it, it's the difference between. Uh, a good uh, kind of colour and, and a poor colour when it comes to when it comes to it's been here look we've, we've got a different kettle of fish with this shot because it's quite a dark shot so I think I'm going to boost it just a fraction in the shadows and drop the highlight to try and even it out a little bit And then go back to the saturation, knock that up by the 15%, and then let's have a look at that compared to what it were.
All right, so that one I actually found it a little bit better to do the balance colour myself because of the skin tone on Jason's neck there. Without it, look, you see it's pretty flat and dark. With it, now it's, you know, a little bit different. I've just set the white balance uh, using Jason's shirt. And I think, you know, for me, that that makes quite a big difference. Let's just see what I mean. That, that bit's near enough white. And it's just completely altered the look of, of the shot. And same again, look, with your exposure. Can you see the difference in the shirt? That's very bright. That just tones it down that little bit and brings that colour back out in it. Um, even though it's a grey colour, it doesn't matter, it's, it's still there. Again, here, look, we've got, it's quite a dark shot, you know, shooting in that in, in that little cubby hole. It's uh, not very easy. And you can't really get, um, you can't really get in there for, for that warm tone straight away. So again, I've done the white balance. I'm using the board at the back because the board's a white board. Um, plasterboard is white so I'm using that colour where it's well, well lit to just really set that white but as you can see here look, we've got a bit of overexposure on this side so what I might do to combat that just slightly is I might actually crop the shot in make it a bit more closer up on uh, on the face of James kind of like that so it just takes that a little bit out, not overly much. You know, I think that's that's a much better frame shot. I think you've got your nice warm tones, and if we then just boost that saturation up again, I reckon. Yeah, look at that. It looks as if he's been on holiday. Bless him. That's how to do it. And we're coming to the end of this uh, of this one now. Not much more really to do. Let's just try on the highlights to see if we can. Oh no, we don't want to drop them too much. In fact, we probably want to boost them because of the darkness of it. But not not overly. Maybe around about there. Shadows keep the same. Mid tone, ever so slightly. Just to give him a bit more of that. Uh, maybe that drop that mid tone actually. Pull that back. That's quite a nice even shot. I like that. You get in the, the the natural effect of whereabouts it's being shot, but the colours and everything stand out. It's nice. It's deep. It's rich, and that's kind of what I like to go for with, with mine. A deep, rich kind of colour. Oh, no. That's not good. Okay. Let's try and claw back a bit of uh, the naturalness of this. That's better. Still getting there. I'd say... No, we don't want to increase exposure. Let's start off with boosting that saturation a bit, making them see the blue. It does help with the blue. Massively helps with the blue. That's quite nice now, even kind of shot. Just a few minor tweaks, it just adds that little bit of depth. Oh yeah, that's very good, very good. I like it. So like I say, each, each one of these has got to be individually kind of graded, uh, just to get that, that kind of clarity within the shot, really. But I now think that is quite a good testimonial.
Now, the only thing that's really missing, which I shall add in when I find the right one, this one. I kind of like to keep my titles relatively, uh, relatively standard. Don't like to overdo them. Um, it's different when someone's paid for bespoke, uh, you know, testimonials. But you know, I think for what Jason does, uh, we don't really need anything too over the top, anything too dramatic. You know, I, I mean, his text looks as if it's similar to what's already there. Uh, you know, so we've got which is Futura, uh, similar to my font as well. So now we can put James's name in. Uh, and he was a student at Fletcher's Renovations. I don't know if he really necessarily wants to keep that in. Um, I'll ask Jason that. We can always show him and we can amend these titles to whatever it is that he wants to do with with them. Uh, I think we're going to make this title the blue colour that's within that he's got. So we take the bar colour, come over to here, get that blue. Oh, look at that. That looks nice, doesn't it? It's all branded up now with these colours. So now we go. The reason we've been booked onto the course is because we need to do full restorations of houses and obviously plastering is included in that. Uh, so it's just. So maybe I have to give it a bit more time before the title comes in. Bring it in around about three and a half, four Full seconds. restorations of houses and obviously plastering is included in that. Uh, so it's just another step on, on the journey, basically. And I think we're on for a winner. So we're going to have a final run through of the, of the whole thing. Uh, in fact, it's that. Let me change this. Where's Petora? I think we're about right. Right, so a final run through of everything that we've done. So we've, we've done quite a lot to this, we've added music to it, we've added a title to it, we've added the B-roll footage into it, we've uh, edited and amended various different cuts, we've cut things down, you know, I think we've done quite a good job. So let's have a, a look through. The reason we've been booked onto the course is because we need to do full restorations of houses and obviously pastoring is included in that. Uh, so it's just another step on, on the journey basically. Learning to plaster and trowel up, I, I wouldn't have even dream of doing it before. Second one, the big one's tips that you get off a, a proper pro plasterer that you won't get anywhere else, just tools of the trade and that kind of thing. Third one, I'd probably say is, is the timings between between the trowels and, and that kind of thing in between the coats, otherwise you, you won't learn that out, outside of a proper course like this, I wouldn't say. Now I've got this course, I feel a lot more confident going forward, outside, even between morning and afternoon of certain days, you feel more confident, you pick it up that quickly. I would definitely recommend this course to, to other people, we've been said to our boss that it's definitely worth doing, I'd imagine he'll, he'll have a few more people on it in the future. I think that's uh, that's a, a relatively good testimonial, if I do say so myself. So, alright, there you go. That's been about an hour, I'd say, of me doing what I do. 
Um, like I say, it's one of those I'll try and come on more frequent uh, and do these little, um, you know, one hour where it gives you the opportunity if you really want to to just jump on and ask any questions. If you see me doing anything or you want to know how to do anything, it gives you the platform then to at least be able to come and talk to me uh, and see how I do what it is that I do. And I can maybe share a bit of a, an insight for you. Um, and give you a bit of a tutorial whilst I'm doing these on Final Cut. Like I said, this is my my time. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much.